Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. But this time we're painting with Jason Bowen, Traditional Oils, are the official sponsor of this channel. <laughs> yeah, so I've started making my own paints and um, hopefully going to use the money, any money that I uh, make from them, to uh, sponsor the channel. So anyway, let's have a look at the palette of colours of the uh, Jason Bowen handmade oils. <laughs> uh, it's good fun making your own paints. Uh, there's a video on YouTube about how to do it if you're interested in making your own. And there'll be a link in the description to my uh, Etsy shop where you could purchase paints if you're interested. So, um, the group of colours I've made for myself is Titanium White. Let's uh, play the video. So we've got titanium white, that's pure titanium white, um, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, burnt umber, Venetian red, chromium oxide green, ultramarine blue. So these are all, you know, full, fully loaded pigments, these are. Fully loaded pigment, nothing else. Pigment and oil, cold pressed linseed oil. So you get a really strong film. Um, yeah, I've been swine up. <laughs> so I'm uh, starting this landscape. Just getting a bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of Venetian red. Just to mix a, a sky colour. I don't need much of the red. Only a little bit. So the reason you can use less paint <laughs> This is a thing actually, um, I didn't know. When I used to, because a lot of paintings I've done with um, student oils, I always pick out the cheapy ones because, you know, I can afford them. But what I didn't realize <laughs> is if you use artist quality paints, um, they go a long way because you don't use as much. Because they don't put a load of uh, fillers and abrasives and stuff that they put in a lot of paints. The student range is not much pigment, that's why you tend to need more paint. You use a lot more when you use student paints. I didn't know any of that. <laughs> I've learned a heck of a lot more recently. So I'm just outlining my mass of trees. You see I've got a picture on the left. Um, like I say, I always don't always use a picture, but for this one I've got a picture and I really liked it. It's when I was out walking and I really liked the uh, the scene because I wanted to uh, paint a group of trees, basically. But as always, I like to change things around to make it my own. <laughs> and uh, that's what I've done. And you'll see when uh, I paint it, I'll change things. So I'm starting uh, blocking in the sky colour. Um, my mixture I'm using is, like I said, a bit of ultramarine blue and Venetian red, just to take it off the blue into more of a, just a hint of a lavendery colour. <laughs> it's not quite. I took a uh, photo of this painting, I put it on Facebook, and it, it the photo came out really well. It captured the colours I used. So if you're interested in uh, checking out the picture, maybe you want to paint along and you want to see the picture, you can find it on my Facebook page. So a bit more of the blue, a bit more of the white. You see another thing with artist paints, they have really good covering power. And uh, even though this canvas is grey, <laughs> as I'm throwing paint on, it covers really well. And uh, that is because of the pigment load. I'll try not to harp on too much about these paints. <laughs> you get excited about, well I do, I get excited about paint. Especially when it works for me. Get even more excited than... So I'm throwing in some blue here and there. Another paint that I really like is um, 
at Windsor and Newton artist paints, you can get them pretty much all over the world. So if you if you're wondering what paint I could get that I that's local, uh, I, I recommend them. They're a good paint. So what I'm doing here is I'm dodging the clouds, basically. I'm just filling in the sky, dodging the clouds. <laughs> Putting in a bit more blue as it goes towards the horizon. So then you get a, uh, a nice light dark blue effect, basically. <laughs> A little bit more, a little bit more paint. Oh, I've not put my headphones on, I've just realised. So I'm just mixing up some uh, sky colour. So what I want to get is a uh, greyish grayish bluish color so we've got some Phoenician red in with the blue and you get almost a you get sort of a warm gray <laughs> so that's Phoenician red ultramarine blue and white you get a warm gray So the more uh, Venetian red I put in, the warmer it gets, and then the more ultramarine blue I put in, the cooler it gets. So you can balance it out. <laughs> so that sky that's on the uh, the photograph um, isn't the sky that was there. <laughs> I've messed around on Photoshop and put a sky in, but from another photo I took, and then uh, I changed it again when I paint it because. I wanted to create a, uh, a certain look, a certain feel in the sky. Um, I felt like the clouds in the original was really just a bit boring. And then the one that I put in on my reference picture, um, a little bit better, a bit more of interest. So sometimes if I Wondering what the colour is, I'll put my brush right up to it and see if my brush is the same colour. Colour mixing uh, gets a lot easier the more you do it. It's like anything else. You start colour mixing and you think, oh, this is hard work. How am I going to do all this? How do you mix all these different shades? But after a while, you just you just do. <laughs> you just mix away. I need to make a video on colour mixing. There's a lot of things I want to make videos on, but uh, time, <laughs> work commitments, so we've got to uh, work around things. So I'm just scrubbing in some grey at the top. Mass, massing in the colour. <laughs> it's really blocking in the colour. Blocking it in. And then the uh, bottom area where there's a few clouds. Something else I tend to do now is uh, edit things out. <laughs> things that you don't think, well, that probably isn't needed in the painting. I just edit it out and I just don't paint it. Change things. Because I did this one painting and uh, it was actually in a graveyard. <laughs> but I really liked the trees. And uh, so what I did is I just missed out the gravestones. <laughs> I, really, I just wanted the trees.
you, you can do that wherever you like. If if you take a photo of something you really want to paint and there's some people in it that you didn't want in the painting, just edit them out as well. <laughs> or you could do it the other way around, put people in it. It's the beauty of uh, being creative, like, it's to do what you want. If uh, you're looking at this and you think, well, I don't really want those type of clouds. I want some different clouds. And then you just paint those clouds that you want. It's always best to do what you want. But if you want just a bit of practice and you want to paint along, then feel free to paint along with this. And then you can pause it if, if I get too far ahead or fast forward it if I'm too far behind. <laughs> that's the that's great thing about YouTube, you can skip skip parts and uh, or go back or watch it again and then think, ah, I see. So I'm just wiping my brush. <laughs> I'm uh, a brush cleaner at the end of a painting and sometimes I don't clean my brushes at all. Um, I've started doing uh, what I've read and chromium green, ultramarine blue. Yeah what I found out is that yeah, per number, just to make a dark. I was making a dark. Yeah, what I found out is uh, oil of cloves stops your uh, paint from drying out. And I tested it in some paint to see what happens. And uh, it does. It works really well. So you can create a, uh, a brush dip. And I, I know um, Mark Carter does it on his... Uh, painting and I thought I would do the same thing although I've done it slightly different because I used what I had. I just dipped my brush in some linseed oil which has got some oil of cloves in it and then I just wiped my brush and I was using it again the next day and my brush was still wet because the oil of cloves stops the oil from drying therefore you don't even need to clean your brushes. <laughs> Um, he recommends using uh, safflower oil, which is interesting. So here I'm just blocking in the dark. I'm uh, looking at the whole shape of the tree and just blocking it in. Got this nice green. Um, chromium oxide is an old green used by the likes of my artist hero, William Turner. Turner, probably the greatest English master painter ever. And a lot of his paintings are at the National Gallery and at Tate Britain. <laughs> Seen, seen his sketchbook as well, amazing, amazing work, unbelievable. He, uh, <laughs> Turner was actually the master of perspective and uh, he taught classes at the academy on perspective. And you can see why when you see his uh, buildings and sketches of the cathedrals and things, unbelievable. I'm just getting some Indian yellow into my mix. Indian yellow is actually um, uh, tartrocyne, I think it is, tartrocyne pigment, because the old Indian yellow was supposedly made out of uh, urine crystals. <laughs> that's not something that's done these days. So uh, this is a closer colour. To that. Um, it's actually similar to uh, cadmium yellow deep, I find. And because uh, when I first created my set of paints, I felt like I was missing a yellow that can 
brighten a bit more than yellow ochre can and uh, it's like a day that this painting is, it's quite sunny and bright you need a bit of warmth in your yellow so I thought, hmm, I'll introduce another colour so I've just introduced that one as well into my palette and it did make a big difference because I've tried doing paintings without it and I felt like I needed it <laughs> So I'm just blocking in that background bit, a bit of light in the background. And then uh, putting in a few trees, distant trees, just an indication of trees. I've left it quite light as well. having a lighter colour. The original photo is very dark in the background. I've done it lighter, a bit bigger, because I wanted them to be in the background and therefore a light colour works. So mix in some yellow ochre, Indian yellow, some white. Make it a, uh, a green that I want. This is uh, an area where there's a lot, of, a lot of dried out part of the field. There's a lot of farms where I live, so <laughs> I get an abundance of uh, farm life pictures. <laughs> if I can just go around the corner and I'm on a farmer's field and I can take pictures. But it's a very rural area. It's, uh, the area, uh, the area of England that I'm in. If you're interested, um, in Lincolnshire. It's a rural area. So I'm just scrubbing in this colour again. <laughs> become my uh, main way of painting now. I paint, start with a uh, kind of a finish um, layer of paint that I've scrubbed in. And I actually learned this method from a uh, paint, a sea painter, a, uh, a phenomenal sea painter as well. He uh, sold his paintings for a heck of a lot of money. <laughs> I was pretty amazed. And uh, I asked him loads of questions when I met him because I wanted to learn and uh, I think he got a little bit annoyed with my questions and or a little bit puzzled with them. But <laughs> it was a while ago that was. Helped me out though. Blocking in like a uh, bit of a yellow ochre and a bit of the uh, Venetian red until where the path is. So the painting at the moment is very flat. <laughs> so you start off with this very flat looking painting and then you can start bringing in your darks and lights to, to improve it. And some people. <laughs> When you're painting out and about, they'll look at your painting and they'll see it all looking like a, a mess. Say like this stage. And they'll be like, ooh, that doesn't look anything like what he's painting. <laughs> it always amuses me when I'm out painting and someone looks at my painting and it's in that really horrible, messy stage. And they're like, Phew. wow, he needs to practice. <laughs> Uh, it is amazing. It's 
amazing what people think of painters. They're like, uh, they're very unusual. Very unusual seeing a person painting out and about. <laughs> What I need is a light, a light for the top of the clouds. Yeah. So mix in a bit of the Indian yellow in my white. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately there's a bit of green in there. <laughs> and I'm making this off white. I'm trying to get it to what I want, but the first mixture just didn't look right. Is what I didn't realise. <laughs> had a bit of green in it or something and it just went Ooh. so I thought oh well I'll put some fresh white on the palette and then uh, wipe my brush on a paper towel and then start mixing again with a little bit of the Indian yellow so the only thing is when you're using yellow and blue in the sky <laughs> and you're doing it all in one go wow got to be careful because you don't want your painting to start going green in the sky and that is a problem when you're doing this kind of technique a la prima technique so you have to uh, balance your brush strokes out <laughs> so if you use a really thick paint when you do your highlights like I do over the blue the highlight is are much thicker than the uh, blue so it overpowers it and therefore won't go green <laughs> and if you use light strokes it doesn't mix very much either it might mix a bit underneath but not the surface all these little bits you start learning the more you paint I like to loosen my shoulder, get the feel of it, and then get started. <laughs> get that feel of that pain. I felt like there was movement in the in the clouds, more movement than the uh, the picture. That's the one thing that I thought straight away. I want more movement. See, that's very impasto, very thick that is. Using a impasto process on, on an impasto paint on the highlights, it's actually a very old method. You'll see it done by uh, Dutch masters, in fact. They tend to uh, leave their darks with barely any paint on, and then their lights they will pile it on. <laughs> their lightest lights has usually got the most paint on, from what I've seen anyway, just from my own observation. I do enjoy piling the paint on though. <laughs> it's good fun. And then when I'm painting I uh, I totally change my mind all the time on what technique I'm going to use because sometimes I'll think right I'm going to do a painting and I'm just going to use thick brush strokes for everything and I tell myself I'm, I'm uh, a great painter like Vincent Van Gogh <laughs> if that's how you say his name or I say to myself oh yes I'm I'm like Turner I'm a constable I'm just as good I can do this and I build myself up in my own head before I even start painting it's a <laughs> it's a bit of a trick in the mind to tell myself I'm that good even though I know I'm nowhere near a Turner or <laughs> a Van Gogh Uh, 
I'm uh, an improving painter. <laughs> Whenever I make my bad paintings, I tell myself, oh, that's okay, because I'm improving. I mixed a bit of the green in there, look. And then I thought, oh no, what am I going to do? I know. I grab a load, a big pile of cloud colour, and I'll just throw it into uh, that area to get rid of the greenness. <laughs> Where there's a problem, there's always a solution. See? You never know now. I'm just blending some of this up a bit, softening it up a little bit. Just moving it. Swiping my brush. Move it some more, move some of the dark into the white, soften that area there. Gotta think about the cloud, and do I want the cloud to be soft and flowy? Do I want movement? So do a little bit of a uh, blend in between the light and dark, it will help. Or maybe you don't want to blend at all and you just put the paint next to each other. You could do that. You can do anything you want. And it's your painting and you, you make your decisions. You make your decision on how you're going to get to the point of the finished painting and, and all the decisions on the way. <laughs> Just adding a bit more light there, more lines. I'll give you a little tip actually. If you're wondering what I'm doing, all the lines are, uh, are, are light arrows and they're pointing towards where the path's going because <laughs> that's where I want to send the viewer down the path. That's an old method, an old trick. They uh, use those sort of tricks with drapery in uh, paintings, like one of my favourite artists, Rubens. He uh, used his drapery to point to things. Like he would have uh, a piece of drapery pointing down at a character. Basically like arrows. I'm just blending away there. So if you're wondering why I did decided to do the highlight after I blocked in the uh, dark of the trees, um, that was because I didn't want to put the lights in and then, this was the idea, then I could add the lights on top of the dark like this. Basically. <laughs> this is where my phone went off. So we'll move on a little bit. We want to be about there. So we're using the uh, <laughs> fan brush, a bit of yellow ochre, chromium oxide, Indian yellow, titanium white, a bit more Indian yellow. What I'm trying to do now is make a nice highlight colour for the leaves. But I have to think while I'm doing this is uh, I need to think about the different colours because there's more than just one highlight colour in amongst there there's all kinds of lights to darks um, um, an array of lights and darks <laughs> more yellow ochre mixing and tapping 
so the paint is on the end of the brush. So I'm making a new pile there with a bit more of the Indian yellow in, a bit of a warmer green, and then cooling down some of the greens with a bit of the ultra blue. Now thinking about the angles, so I'm just tapping, tapping with a fan brush, get some uh, leaves on these trees. Fan brushes are fantastic to do this, and you could do quite a lot of detail as well. Used this this technique I know has been used by quite a lot of uh, popular painters. It's quite a light pressure. You don't want this to slide on top of the other paint. You just want it to sit there. And then I'm looking at the different shapes on the picture, changing them to the way I want them to be. <laughs> Trying not to overdo it. And that's a, a big thing when you're doing this sort of thing and you're doing a mass of uh, trees. It's so, so easy to overdo it. <laughs> I think uh, as you you progress as a painter, I start to believe that the less is more approach. You just don't want too much, you want just enough and you need to stop at that point. <laughs> so I've, I've been looking at some of my old paintings and uh, I was like, God, I really went to town on that one. <laughs> like all the highlights are uh, over the top and just everything's over over the top and then uh, I went through a period of um, not doing as much and underdoing it all thinking oh yeah I'm, I'm a great painter I know how to not do it <laughs> uh, it's funny when you think about yourself at different stages of your art. I mean, we're always learning. I'm, I feel like a beginner all the time. I'm always learning. Bit, bit of a darker green in amongst this. There's quite a few layers in here. You want to try and keep some darks to create depth. Always thinking about the uh, thinking about depth in within it. So that's what you're doing. You're trying to uh, convince <laughs> the person that looks at your painting that there's space in there within a two-dimensional piece of canvas with paint on it <laughs> you're trying to convince on that there's a landscape there or or there's a person there <laughs> got the big drink again <laughs> big cup of tea keep myself hydrated I really enjoyed painting this painting actually. Some paintings uh, are really hard going that I've done in the past. Some of them I just really really enjoyed them. And this one I really really enjoyed it. If you've seen uh, some of my miniature paintings I enjoy those as well. They're, they're good fun. I'm actually enjoying my painting a lot at the moment. I'm just enjoying myself. When I when I go to work, 
I'm always thinking about, oh, I can't wait to get home so I can start on a, another painting. <laughs> So the fan brush, um, as far as I know, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but one of my uh, art heroes, John Constable, he used to use it. <laughs> he used to use a lot of uh, different brushes actually, when he would make his uh, leaves. Apparently he used to wait for his oil paint to dry a little bit, and then uh, he would get his big brush into his dryish paint. And then he'd slop it on, <laughs> but then he gets all these different colours. And uh, fantastic painter. So I'm always sitting back, having a look. <laughs> Gotta always sit back and have a look. Getting a bit more of the yellow, Indian yellow, and white. I haven't cleaned my brush at all, I've just kept mixing. Getting some of that Indian yellow now. I'm looking for the light, some real light points. Put a little bit more of the colour on. Wherever, wherever you want it to be. You sit back, have a look. Or if you're using a photo, have a look at the photo, think about it. Think about if you agree. <laughs> using a reference picture does help. It does keep you in line a little bit. Don't feel like you have to do it the same. Always uh, have to think about it. I like, I like to be able to think about it and go, well, I, I don't want to do it like that, I'll do something a bit different. So I find if you use a light pressure, you can almost just lose a little bit of paint off your brush into the darks. And then uh, if you, the more you use your brush, the darker it gets because it picks up what's on there and also you you run out of paint. <laughs> so that's a good time to do your dark darks. Now I was feeling at this point that my darks were a little bit too the right word cold, dull. There was no life uh, in them. So I thought in my head, <laughs> well, you know, I think I might warm some of these darks up with a little bit of the Venetian red in amongst the dark darks. There we go. That's my dark, some Venetian red in it. I'll take it a little bit darker in areas with a little bit of warmth. And that will also give me another, all the areas that I slightly miss, it gives it another um, dimension. But yeah, this, this warmth really helped. So I can imagine if you walked through that wood, well actually, I did, it was really, really hot, so, <laughs> get some warmth in it. So we want the viewer to look at and go, hmm, that looks warm in amongst there. <laughs> so the only way to do that is to actually put some red in there. So here's where it all gets a bit funny. <laughs> the more you put paint on top of white, and that's quite a lot of white, the milkier it becomes. <laughs> so what I should have really done there is got the knife and whipped off the area that I was wanting to add a bit of dark. 
and then I wouldn't have got into that issue of needing to pile paint on to hide it. <laughs> to myself, oh no, what have I done? Now I'm going to have to put some darks in amongst it. I still felt brave because I did it over there as well. <laughs> Just breaking up the uh, darkness so really, showing that there is a bit of light. I went a bit too light there. I was like, right, I'm getting my dark. <laughs> Darken it down a bit. It's a funny game, isn't it? <laughs> dark light, dark light. So my next painting that I plan on doing going to do a still life using the same palette of colours just to show you that you can do still life with the same paints and then after that I'm planning to do a portrait so hopefully they'll turn out good and they'll uh, end up as videos on YouTube <laughs> but if they don't then uh, you'll never know what they look like <laughs> So just adding a bit more light here and there. It's a bit of more the Venetian red in that to warm that area up. Bit of variety, you see. And I thought, hmm, I quite like the way this red is warming areas up, so I'll put it here and there in amongst some of the other areas. using a uh, wet wipe to wipe my hand because I got a load of titanium white on it <laughs> I'm sort of seeing back taking my time looking at what I want to do next and there's this area which needed a bit of yellow ochre, a bit of white and my brush I was kind of sending it all over the place because this bush it is all over the place <laughs> it's got branches going everywhere so so I used my brush everywhere <laughs> Hand brush works well for that. But you use whatever brush you've got. Don't feel like you have to use the same brushes because you could do it with a, a flat brush or a, if you've got a one inch brush you could do it. Fan brush, it just seems to work well for me. So a bit more of the Indian yellow in there, in the mix. Warm this area up as well. It's a bit lacking of colour, it's a bit the same. So it needs something. A bit of yellow ochre or Indian yellow in with a white. A few different types of brush strokes. Helps. Helps make that look looks similar to what it really looks like but with paint <laughs> something I try and do is uh, do various brush strokes because my like Monet said uh, the more different types of brush strokes you have in your painting the better it'll look the more effective
まあ、he said something like that anyway. <laughs> Got to agree with him. Can't not agree with uh, Monet, can we? If you've ever had the pleasure of seeing a Monet painting, you'll uh, realize why everyone liked him so much, because they're amazing. And it's amazing how much paint they used to use. <laughs> So yellow ochre in with a white, still a dirty brush, got a bit of Indian yellow in there. <laughs> and we can uh, start working on this light that's along here. Just tap in. Tappy tap. So if you're wondering uh, if there's any difference between this technique and other painting techniques I've shown on this channel, um, not much different really. Is it different to the wet on wet approach? Not massively different, no. Uh, the only difference is I'm not using any um, underneath medium, no base coat mediums. But uh, what I did do is I uh, blocked in all the colours first, so in a way I am. <laughs> There's plenty of different ways to do things. You experiment and find out ways that you like the best. So I've got a, like a mass of uh, grasses and weeds and things here and I thought to myself how am I going to get this how am I going to get this effect and uh, I just I started to think I scrape my brush down a little bit and then move it all around <laughs> like that look you start to get a lot of lines indication of a lot of things going on so that's what I started doing just thinking there's grass growing in all different directions so pulling my brush in all different directions not in every single spot I want to keep some areas dark light and then I tapped a little bit <laughs> <laughs> Scraping, tapping, pulling the paint all over the place. Do anything that you want to do. Uh, <laughs> create anything by doing that. Either tapping, scraping, pulling in a certain direction. That's basically all, all, all the painting you need to know. <laughs> but yeah, it was just a way of getting this effect. So I've got a bit more light on my brush. I'll put a few more marks in there. But when you uh, show your painting to somebody, you don't tell them that you do it like this. You don't tell them that you've just done laying lines everywhere. You say, no, I, I, I got a tiny brush and I painted every wisp of grass. <laughs> and then when they say, oh, wow, that must have taken you ages to do that. You say, yeah, it did. It took, took hours and hours. And, uh, and then when they say, oh, well, how much uh, for your painting? And uh, you say, well... You know, I'm going to have to put my arm in a sling if I'm doing all those lines. Um, and but I'll uh, I will take a fair, honest price, <laughs> and then hopefully they'll offer you uh, a decent amount of money that will help you with your art ventures. 
that's what we need as artists, don't we? We need to keep earning a bit of money to uh, be able to keep painting. So I added a bit of warm grassy bits there. bit of warmth in places just to uh, get near that path I just felt like it needed warming up a little bit so I'm <laughs> wiping my hand again and wiping the brush on the paper towel I'm going to grab a bit more yellow Yellow ochre is a really old pigment used from probably the beginning of painting. <laughs> Venetian red in there. So I was umming and ahhing with the path. I was like, should I put thick paint or down on the path? Shall I just leave it quite thin? And I was umming and ahhing. <laughs> I put a bit of Venetian red and yellow ochre on this brush and just put little indications of a few uh, things in amongst the grass. I just want to uh, create an impression of something create an impression of things in there. I didn't want to uh, paint every little blade of grass. I mean, you can if you want. <laughs> but it's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to uh, you know, create an, a feeling of things, grass and plants and things. And, and that's all. <laughs> my stomach's churning <laughs> so at that point of the day when uh, my stomach's saying food food so using a uh, smaller brush just putting in some dots of flowers I think there was daisies and all these other white weeds and amongst them so we create a uh, indication of that. It's not pure white. There's a little bit of a uh, colour in there. Some of those tall white plants. Whatever they are. In one area that I walk, the weeds are enormous. <laughs> Uh, I'd never seen weeds so big before. You know the weeds that you would see in your back garden, and you're like, oh no, not another one of those. Um, look these weeds that I see, they're giants. You know, when I was walking around this area, I uh, I saw this. Um, well, there was two two deer around the corner, and uh, I was trying to take a picture of them, but they legged it. <laughs> you know, you, you when you put your camera away in your bag and you start walking, and that's the point when you see something, and then you you try and get your camera out, and it's too late. <laughs> I really enjoyed this walk though that I did to get this picture. It was a really good one. It felt like a real adventure. I'm not a landscape painting, it's an adventurous thing. Getting out there 
with your paints or with a camera shooting away. I like to do both. Sometimes I uh, I really need to get out there with paints. I'm thinking about going out and painting in the city again but with my oil paints rather than uh, with my gouache and watercolours get out there with my oils and maybe I could have a few paints in my jacket <laughs> and I could say oh, yeah, I'm using these paints if you're interested <laughs> be a good idea. As long as I don't get caught. <laughs> well I could put a hat down. Hmm. I could just paint away the stress of everyday life as Clive says. <laughs> I could put a hat down, maybe people will give me donations. Hmm. Think about that. <laughs> so I was putting little bits of indications of a few uh, leaves in there. But when you're looking at this picture, do you feel like going down that path? <laughs> and your eye goes up to the sky and it brings you back down towards the path, towards that dark area. So I'm just getting some blue and white, the sky colour. And I'm picking out some more spots where the light can break the mass of green. This is an important thing because... I've done a lot of paintings outside and uh, I can tell you the light penetrates masses of trees <laughs> and uh, when you're doing your painting try it and uh, try adding a bit of light holes in amongst these masses of trees it does make a difference if you're making up a landscape try it, try that observe it because it, honestly <laughs> it's amazing how much light gets through so we're getting closer to the end I just wanted to check the timer I'm just throwing in some more little light areas pulling my head right back, I pull my head right back and look at the whole picture. I considered putting a bird in there, but I don't remember seeing any birds when I was walking, so I didn't. Felt like that was too dark there. Now the picture's all coming together, you can start making changes. So a little bit of light there, that makes it much better. can sit back, have a look, make decisions, what you want to do, how you want to improve it, maybe you want to put a person in it, you could put, you could paint a little uh, painter walking through there with his camera, <laughs> or you could uh, paint me hiding in those trees, waiting for those deer to come back with my camera, <laughs> hoping for a picture. So I wanted to flatten that path out, so I've got a bit of yellow ochre and a bit of the uh, red on my brush. Put a few brush strokes in there. So yeah, this is uh, pretty much it. I'm just adding a few more bits, but this is the uh, almost the finished painting here. So I hope you've enjoyed this painting episode, I hope it's uh, 
give you an idea on how to paint a landscape and uh, <laughs> just had a bit of light bits there a little bit of light in with the yellow ochre in places so yeah that's uh, almost done so there you go that's the uh, finished painting i hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, thanks very much for watching and i'll see you another one cheers bye